Poland's military has been going through a massive transformation, possibly resulting in it becoming the next number one military superpower in Europe, and it's making Putin's blood run cold. After centuries of domination by foreign powers, Poland freed itself from communist rule in 1989 and joined NATO a decade later. This was a critical turning point not only for NATO but for Poland itself, heralding the start of a new era in Warsaw's international relations. Long the plaything of great powers like Germany and its predecessor state Prussia, Austria, and Russia, which had partitioned its territory several times and oppressed its people in numerous, brutal ways, Poland is now on the fast track to becoming a great power itself. In the year 2023, Poland is stronger than at any point since its glory days in the 17th century, when the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth dominated much of Eastern Europe, and it is getting stronger still. Let's take a look at this incredible evolution. How is Poland transforming itself into a great power and what does it mean for that country, Europe, and the world? The entrance of Poland into NATO was a major geopolitical advantage to the alliance. During the Cold War, the alliance struggled to contain the Soviet Union, as it and its satellite states in the Warsaw Pact stretched westward all the way to central Germany. If it so desired to move further west, NATO's forces on the European continent would be outnumbered and the communist forces could all concentrate on a narrower front in the European plain. Poland's accession to the Western Bloc completely reversed this geostrategic situation. It was now the new, post-Soviet Russian Federation that faced the geographical disadvantage, as NATO's forces could concentrate and Russia had a much broader area of the European plain to defend should war break out. Poland's accession to NATO also cut Russia off from much of the Baltic Sea, as its coastline forms part of the natural choke point with Sweden, which in 2023 also had pending NATO membership. Put simply, on land and sea, Poland's joining NATO was one of the biggest geopolitical and geostrategic disasters for Russia after the end of the Cold War. However, Poland is no mere passive player in the alliance. It does not contribute to the free rider problem in NATO that President Obama lamented in a 2016 interview with The Atlantic, and his successor President Trump repeatedly brought up in bellicose ways in order to try and get NATO members to pay more. Poland actually carries its weight in NATO's collective security. As of July 2023, it has spent 2.42% of its GDP on defense, well above the 2% benchmark that the alliance considers its standard. This makes Poland NATO's third largest defense spender by GDP, after Greece at 3.76% and the United States at 3.47%. Poland increased its defense spending from just under the 2% benchmark in 2014 to the current 2.42% over the course of a decade. Undoubtedly, this was done primarily in response to a more aggressive Russia from 2014 onward. The Poles have a long historical memory and do not want to be the subject of Russian domination ever again. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine strengthened that resolve in Warsaw. Poland's relative level of defense spending compared to Germany's estimated 2022 total of 1.44% has even prompted many American lawmakers to propose strengthening the United States' military ties with Warsaw at the expense of Berlin. Some American policymakers have floated the idea of moving most of the 35,000 US military personnel in Germany further east into Poland. A 2020 reshuffling of some American troops from Germany to Poland during the twilight days of the German skeptical Trump administration was a potential preview of that process. Poland plans to do more too. It has increased its defense spending to 4% of GDP in its 2023 budget. This would have it surpass Greece and the United States as the largest per capita military spender in NATO and put it at a level over twice that of many other longtime NATO members, such as France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. As the quantity of Poland's military spending has gone up, the quality has gone up too. It can afford to spend a hefty amount of money on top-of-the-line military equipment because Poland has enjoyed breakneck economic growth compared to the rest of Europe. It's one of the 21st century's underreported miracle stories. Indeed, since liberalization began in 1989, Poland has experienced more economic growth than the highly touted Asian tiger countries like Taiwan, Singapore, and South Korea. In effect, Poland has been the tiger of Europe in the post-Cold War era. Between 1989 and 2015, Poland's GDP per capita based on purchasing power more than doubled and reached 65% of the level seen in Western Europe. 
It was the highest absolute and relative level of wealth in that country since the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, according to the Brookings Institution. As of 2023, its GDP per capita is about $19,000. Since 1991, Poland's total nominal GDP has grown by 126.35%, with an annual average growth of 3.94%. Tellingly, Poland did not go into recession in the financial crisis of 2008-2009, unlike the larger European Union, which shrank by 4.5%. Poland's economy instead grew by 4.2% in 2008 and 2.8% in 2009. While the so-called pigs countries Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece and Spain struggled with the debt crisis and austerity measures at the time, Poland continued ahead with its economic growth. The Polish economy shrank by 2.02% in 2020 at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, but it weathered the viral storm better than many other countries, and bounced back incredibly strongly with a 6.85% growth rate in 2021. All of this speaks highly of the robust and diversified economy that Poland has created in its modern, post-communist era. Poland still places modestly in an absolute ranking of the world's economies, especially compared to its NATO peers. It has the world's 21st largest economy in GDP by 2022 dollars, with a total of $688 billion. Still, the country's economic growth has been such a success story that some observers have estimated it will have a larger economy than the United Kingdom by 2030 if its current trajectory continues. Already by GDP per capita at purchasing power parity, major cities in Poland like Warsaw, Poznan, Krakow and Rocklaw are much richer than cities in the United Kingdom like Birmingham, Manchester and Liverpool. Although Poland's total GDP per capita still significantly lags the United Kingdom at $46,000 for the Poles, the trend is their friend. Their current GDP per capita is almost 11 times higher than it was in 1990, when it was only at a level of $1,731. The days of food shortages and lack of other basic necessities that the Poles experienced under communist rule particularly in the 1980s, are long gone. The country's prosperity can be measured in another way too. After it joined the European Union in 2004, hundreds of thousands of Poles left Poland to seek opportunity in the United Kingdom, which as a fellow member of the European Union back then, was easy for them to do. Now the situation has turned on its head, as Poles who immigrated to Britain are now emigrating and returning home for better opportunities than the sluggish British economy can afford them. The Polish government is keen to hurry the process along. Its finance ministry has created a program called the Polish Deal, which offers a 0% income tax for the first four years to Polish emigres who decide to return home. But Polish expatriates are not the only people seeking a better life there. The situation has reversed so much that many British and other Western European expatriates are moving into Poland, often commenting highly about the good standard of living and economic opportunity there for an affordable price. Poland's economy has become a hotbed for technological innovation and manufacturing, and it has one of the most highly educated workforces in Europe, with about one in two young Poles having achieved a post-secondary education. Foreign tech companies like Google and Microsoft are opening data centers in Poland. Meanwhile, the Swedish battery manufacturer Northvolt completed its construction of its factory in Poland in May 2023. It's the largest factory for energy storage systems in Europe. Poland also has 115 aerospace companies working in what is known as its Aviation Valley, an area in the southeast of the country that has a high number of pilot training centers and industrial and scientific research facilities. About 35,000 people are employed there, among 180 different members that do about 3.5 billion euros in sales, according to the Aviation Valley Association. The association's long-term objective is to make its area one of Europe's leading aerospace regions. Poland's post-communist financial success is all the more remarkable when one considers that its population is declining, despite the huge economic growth. Its fertility rate is only about 1.4 births per woman, well below the 2.1 needed for population replacement. By the end of the century, demographers estimate that Poland will have a population of about 23 million people, only a little more than half what it is today. With this in mind, it is possible that Poland's leaders believe they need to build a top-of-the-line military now, while their country's population and economy is at a high point. Either way, the wealth generated by its economic growth has allowed Poland to increase the quality and quantity of its military. It plans to double the size of its standing army to a total of 300,000 troops by 2035. 
It is also investing heavily in a modern, technological and capital-rich military, with some of the world's most advanced weapons systems. As part of this process, Poland has deepened ties with the United States and South Korea in particular. First, Poland is creating a modern air fleet based on the fifth-generation F-35 Lightning II fighter jet. Its initial order is for 32 of these planes. Meanwhile, Poland plans to rid itself of older Soviet-era planes like the fourth-generation MiG-29, which it is often keen to donate to Ukraine for the fight against Russia. Supplementing the F-35 is an order of 48 South Korean F-A-50 planes, the first 10 of which were delivered in July 2023. The F-A-50 is a light combat aircraft introduced in 2005. The jet is capable of supersonic flight and performing air-to-air -air or air-to-ground missions. Just as importantly, the F-A-50 is one of the world's few supersonic training aircraft, making it an ideal choice to train Polish pilots to operate the F-35. 96 American AH-54 Apache attack helicopters are also on the menu for the Poles. Poland is modernizing its tank and armored forces too. It intends to buy 116 American M1A1 Abrams tanks and 250 of the newer M1A2 Abrams tanks. Warsaw plans to supplement this force with 1,000 South Korean K2 main battle tanks. This is in addition to its own force of 1,000 Polish-made Borsuk infantry fighting vehicles. Meanwhile, Poland is steadily donating the Soviet-era T-72 tanks in its arsenal to Ukraine. For the Poles, these old systems are no longer desirable. Poland is modernizing its artillery forces as well. The government in Warsaw is spending $10 billion on the American HIMARS rocket artillery system, which proved so devastating to Russian forces in Ukraine in 2022. It has purchased 18 HIMARS systems as of March 2023 spending $414 million on this platform, and this is just the beginning. Poland plans to buy a total of 500 HIMARS systems from the United States, which will include 45 ATAC-M's missiles, as part of a $10 billion deal. Considering how much damage only 16 or so HIMARS systems did to Russia in Ukraine in the late summer and autumn offensives in the Kharkiv and Kherson oblasts in 2022 without the long-range ATAC-M's missiles, this would be a formidable force for the Poles indeed. Supplementing HIMARS are 288 South Korean Chunmu multiple rocket launch systems. The Poles desire modern tube artillery systems as well. As part of this effort, they are in the process of purchasing South Korean K9A1 self-propelled howitzers. These systems have a range of 34 miles. 600 of these platforms are now in the country. More are likely to come. Poland is also buying about $5 billion worth of Patriot air defense missiles from the United States and is spending $2.4 billion for British CAM air defense missiles. Russian air and drone strikes against Ukrainian cities and civilian infrastructure undoubtedly set off alarm bells among government officials in Warsaw. Poland is creating a modern air defense network to ensure the same does not happen to its cities. Poland's military buildup in size and technological quality is rapidly creating the most formidable fighting force on the European continent. When completed, the 300,000-man standing army will be the largest in Europe by number of boots on the ground. In size, readiness, and technological capability, Poland is set to become the most militarily powerful it's been since its golden age in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth of the 17th century, which the Poles will remember fondly. The Commonwealth routinely defeated Russian forces. In fact, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth defeated Russia in the early 17th century and even occupied Moscow, something that Napoleon and Hitler failed to do, and only accomplished by one other fighting force, the Mongols. For a little while, the Poles and their Russian boyar collaborators installed the son King Sigismund III of Poland as the Russian Tsar. This episode was in many ways the height of the Commonwealth's power, but a century later, the tide would turn completely, and Poland would cease to exist as a state. Poland's new military is a source of pride, a signal that the bad times of partition, occupation and communism have finally been banished, and Poland is retaking its place among the great powers of Europe. For the Poles, the 21st century military buildup and change in their country's status is not only a matter of pride, it is partially a matter of necessity, and for current, not just historical reasons. Poland shares a border with the heavily fortified and nuclear-armed Russian enclave of Kaliningrad in the north. Russian figures show that about 100,000 troops are stationed in this tight area, but Western experts believe the number might be twice that. 
Kaliningrad is also home to Russia's Baltic fleet. Furthermore, Kaliningrad's presence along the borders of Poland and Lithuania creates a rare weakness in NATO's geostrategic position. This weakness is known as the Sawalki Gap. The 40-mile corridor across the Polish-Lithuanian border that separates Kaliningrad with Russia's vassal state, Belarus. A pincer offensive eastward from Kaliningrad and westward from Belarus threatens to cut the three Baltic states, Lithuania, Estonia and Latvia, off from Poland and the rest of NATO by land. Poland would see heavy fighting in such an operation. Meanwhile, Kaliningrad is only about 240 miles north of Warsaw. With such densely concentrated forces in the enclave, a strong military capable of meeting a potential Russian offensive from its westernmost bastion is a matter of national survival. It presents a demand for increased spending that NATO states further to the west simply do not have. In effect, those countries can afford to be the free riders President Obama complained about. Poland does not have that luxury. Its territory is one that would be wrecked if a broader war were to ever break out in Europe again. Germany presents an additional demand on Poland to increase its military readiness. For historical reasons, Poland was uneasy with the comparatively warm relationship Germany shared with Russia prior to the invasion of Ukraine. This situation came partially as a result of the former's heavy dependency on Russian oil and natural gas. The Nord Stream pipeline across the Baltic from Russian to German territory was perhaps the best example of this chummy relationship. Undoubtedly, Germany and Russia's flirtation called to mind the Ribbentrop Pact. The non-aggression agreement between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union in 1939 that partitioned Poland between them, among some policymakers in Warsaw. Poland's military expansion is a way to put pressure on the Germans to pay their fair share of NATO's defense and to remember who their true ally in the 21st century is. For now, the move seems to be paying off, as Germany has declared it will increase its defense spending to the NATO benchmark 2% of GDP in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There are many skeptics who say they have heard this from Berlin many times before, however. Warsaw probably has a disproportionate amount of them. Poland has also been a leading provider of military aid to Ukraine, with 2.48 billion euros worth. This is far behind countries like the United States, United Kingdom and Germany, but Poland's aid is the third largest of any individual country in Europe and disproportionate to its GDP. In contrast, the EU institutions have mostly provided financial aid rather than military. Ukraine's defense is a necessity for Poland. The last thing the Poles want is for Russia to get even closer to their border. Russia's aims in Ukraine are antithetical to Poland's very existence. For the United States, Poland's rise to a military great power on the European continent is a most welcome development, to the point that Washington is even willing to lend a hand in the process. In 2022, the United States Congress approved a $288.6 million military financial package to Poland to speed its arms build-up along. The stated purpose was to deter and defend against further Russian aggression in Europe. The aid mutually benefits both countries. For Washington, containing Beijing's ambitions in the Indo-Pacific region is now the number one foreign policy priority, even with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. With Europe now only a secondary theater in the United States' geopolitical strategy, Poland's military buildup is a much welcome boost for America's goals, as it will reduce the European defense burden, which has been so disproportionately carried by the superpower across the Atlantic since World War II. The American help is welcome for Warsaw too. Poland's military spending comes at a high price tag, about 85 billion euros worth on new weapons by 2030, and with risks to come at the expense of civilian projects. Inflation in Poland is also running high, at 17%, and economic growth, though still high, is slowing. There is a risk of resource strain with such high levels of military spending. However, the leadership in Warsaw believes that the price of the arms buildup is affordable and of secondary concern. Jarosław Kaczynski, the chairman of Poland's ruling Law and Justice Party, summed up the mentality behind this expansion in military spending in early 2023 when he said, It is better to be in debt and even to have to make cuts to budgets in other areas than to be occupied. Whoever has seen what is happening in Ukraine should have no doubt about this. Kaczynski, a former Polish prime minister, is considered one of Warsaw's leading power brokers. He was born in 1949 and remembers the bad old days, where he was an active member in anti-communist circles in Poland. He and other politicians of his generation understand what is at stake and what needs to be protected. For them, Poland's ascendancy to a militarily great power is not only a matter of pride, but one of survival. 
Russia's invasion of Ukraine and its numerous and varied war crimes there stirred both recent and deep historical demons in Warsaw. The response has been to build a first-rate military that will soon be without peer on the European continent, if all goes according to plan. But will it? What do you think? Tell us your opinions on Poland's economic rise and military buildup, and what it means for European and world politics. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.